third and final segment of the show. And I'm so happy that you decided, you know, to stay with me in our Comic Con uh, recap. If you missed uh, any of our interviews at the beginning with uh, some of the cast from 12 Monkeys and Practical Jokers, uh, in our second segment, we talked to uh, a few of the cast members from Dark Matter. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you uh, check out the podcast on iHeartRadio. You can go to my website, paulamadeuslane.com. Our ABC News came at, at came at 1490 AM. We definitely got you covered. Alien invasions, right? Just found out that the government is hiring somebody at NASA that's going to protect us from aliens. Well, I'm sure if they need some help, they can talk to my next guest that I was able to chat with uh, at Comic-Con 2017. Some of the cast members from Colony had a chance to catch up with them to uh, talk about last season and the upcoming season. What are some things in store for certain characters? Started off my conversation with Josh Holloway. You know, Josh. Josh plays Will Bowman and Josh and I had a blast (laughs) just talking. Here you go. Check it out. Josh, Comic-Con's upon us. How are you enjoying it? I love it. I have always loved Comic-Con. This is my eighth or ninth. And uh, it's always fun, and it's always my birthday. I always spend my birthday at Comic-Con, which is a great omen. I love it. So did they do something special for you? Yes. The um, Foreign Press, the Hollywood Foreign Press, actually gave me a cake. Uh, and, of course, my cast members and everything are doing something for me. So it's, it's been great. And I just love the energy of Comic-Con. It's where you're a true barometer of your fans and where they lie and how good your show is. You get a really solid understanding of where, you, where you're at in Comic-Con, and I love that. I love the honesty of the fans and the dedication of them. And talk about the fan interaction. Like, let's say when a fan comes up to say, Yo, Josh, it's amazing, it's hot, it's smoking, and they come, well, Josh, ah, how do you deal with that? I love both. I like criticism, and I like uh, I like you know people to be very excited about it. As long as they're engaged, as long as they're engaged, then they're engaged, and I and I will answer any anything they have to say. And at Comic Con, that's what I mean. Their questions are poignant, and they're they may not like something you're doing or or the way the show's going, and they'll tell you. And it's it's just great feedback. Also for the writers, you know, they're like see what works and what doesn't. So I deal with it with positive energy. I'm like, yeah, what, what do you got? <laughs> awesome. So as we look at the, the season, what are some of the highlights of the season thus far for you? Well, we haven't started the filming this one yet, season three. Uh, so I don't know yet. Uh, what I do like is we're beginning the story off-grid because last season we got out of the L.A. block and... I am from North Georgia mountains, grew up on a dirt road. I lived in the woods my whole life with three brothers, so I love this this little journey. We're going to be off grid, we're going to be living in the forest for, you know, while, I don't know how long that's going to last, but at least we start there. And for me, that's super exciting. Now, what are you looking forward to in this next season? Uh, if you had your wish to, have, to make the story go any way you want it to go, what, what would Josh like to see happen? I would like to see Will rebel up a bit. I'd like to see Will go rogue. Uh, and, you know, he's been so immersed in, in this tunnel vision of just getting the family together and collaborating, do anything you can to do that. And now that they are together, I want to see him bust. And be like, okay, I don't trust anybody. Let's, let's rock. Uh, but we'll see where he goes and because he's a, he will always have his moral code but I'd like to see more of the ranger come out you know, go get some We're definitely- and also the alien mythology I love when that it's a patient unfolding of that story and this season I'm looking forward to that they're really going to answer some questions uh, about the mythology which I'm excited about I'd like to thank Josh for opening up with us and, and talking about uh, last season and, and the season coming up. Then we had a chance to chat with the beautiful Sarah Wayne Callies. 
You know Sarah. Sarah plays Katie Bowman. Here's our chat. Sarah, how's your con going? My con is going good. My con is going good. I'll tell you what, though. Comic-Con gets a little bit less weird every year, and I miss it. I miss when it was just, like, crazy and weird and all, like, legit geeks. And now it's a lot of fanboys and fangirls, right? No, it's not that. That's the great part. It's that it's becoming more corporate. It feels a little bit more like a launching platform or a film festival, which is fine. But I just, like, it used to just be crazy cosplayers and, like, people who lived and breathed comic books. And I miss those guys. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then we, when we look at, look at the series, mm -hmm. what's been some of the feedback you've gotten from last season uh, from the fans, critics? What's some of the feedback you got? Well, you know, my, my, my favorite review, I think, was from Vox. It said, Colony is accidentally the most relevant show on TV, um, which I don't know that the writers love that word accidentally. But, you know, we landed in the middle of an intersection between a television show and an administration in a way that I think heightened what sci-fi always does, right? Which is hold a mirror up to society. Um, and I think, I think it's brave. I think it's interesting. I think it's a great way to look at some of what's going on without having to watch the news because that can be a little overwhelming. And from what I understand about what they're doing with season three, they're taking that even further, which I'm excited about. And, and Sarah, as we look into season three, what are you hoping to have? What are you hoping to happen uh, with the series? You know, I mean, I'm, I would love for Katie to find a way to take all of her ideological heartbreak over the ways in which the resistance has been led badly um, and have the courage to step up and be a leader herself. That could be an evolution that takes another four seasons or she may become so disillusioned that she just says to hell with it and you know, it just works to keep her head down. But, you know, I think, I think the team of Katie and Broussard as balance for each other, you know, he's got such passion that he puts right into action. And she's got passion that she puts into her head and her heart first. And I think that balance could create a really interesting movement if they ever got the chance. And when we look at what Sci-Fi did with 12 Monkeys, uh, with the last season, a uh, binge watch over three three days. I have not seen it, so I'll be. I, I, I won't. I won't tell you about it. Okay, thanks. But would you like to see more series do that? Have the full season within three or four days, so that everyone can can watch it all at once? Or do you like the traditional once a week? You know, I mean, I'm I'm a pretty big proponent of free choice. Like, if somebody wants to sit down and watch all 13 episodes at once, more power to them. I think there are a lot of people. I think a lot of consumers these days really look to that and that that's their model that's how they watch everything um i mean i know like for instance when the show airs in france they air three episodes at a time i kind of like watching a show one episode every week or so just because that's about as much time as i've got in my life but i don't need to tell anybody how to live their life or how to watch a show they just watch the show i don't care <laughs> it's good by me i love the way sarah opened up to us about her character and and the things we have to have to look forward to and lastly, Broussard, Tory Kittles himself. Tory's a deep brother. That's all I have to say. I mean, he, he's philosophical. You know, he just, he just, you just hold on to every word when he articulates. Check it out. You know what I mean. All right, Tory, Comic-Con is yeah. here. How you enjoying your con? I'm having fun, man. I'm always amazed by everybody that comes out to support the show they give us so much love you know we just finished up the panel and they were going crazy we gave away some stuff too um yeah we gave away some print some print some print stuff from season three some new artwork yes and uh so people are flipping out about that it's just great it's great and sorry season two wrapped up well what are some of your highlights from from season two that that kind of stuck out in your mind you know what episode 12 we shot this one shot where we went we started outside, went in through a theater, worked our way up the stairs to like the fifth floor of the theater, all while being shot at. And it was, uh, it was myself, it was my character, so it was Broussard, Will, Katie, Morgan. So the four of us, and, and being shot at by about, uh, I don't know, 30 guys? 
And so it was such a coordination of all of us to be able to pull it off. And we and I think we pulled it off. But it was it was yeah, that was pretty crazy. Talk about the growth of your character that we've seen over over the episodes and mm -hmm. what we are going to see in season three. You know, Bashar started out as this sort of stoic, um, closed off uh, mercenary, you know, soldier, but he, you didn't really, you, you didn't get to know him really well. You didn't know anything about him. In season two, you know, we introduce, you know, his mother and then the, and we introduce her and then he loses her. So you get where he's coming from. You get uh, what happened to him while he was overseas working in the private sector. Um, so you start to see more of his humanity and he reveals more of it as the season goes along. You know, by the end of the season, he's sacrificing his own life for the sake of Will and Katie's family. Um, he's also established a great friendship with Morgan. Um, but then in the finale, that's taken away. So it changes him. Um, you know, and I, I think what we're going to see in this season is the guy who was so great at being on his own and so so happy and comfortable with solitude is now going to miss the companionship. And I think he's going to find ways to fight for that. Um, you know, because what else are you fighting for? That's true. And, and Tori, when we look at how fans are able to, to interact uh -huh. now on social media mm -hmm. and uh, talk about the encouragement that you have gotten from the fans out there when we have, when they we have the best social media fans we live tweet with them but not e even now we know we're, we're not even on air right now but they're every week they're reaching out they're so supportive so actually i just want to say thank you to them you know for for hitting us up you know for encouraging for telling us sending us all this love like we really appreciate it like i wasn't even like i became a social media dude because of colony i wasn't even really into it too much you know but but the fans have it sort of turned me into it they've opened me up to it so it, it's great you know because you get the immediate feedback um that you normally wouldn't get you know and things move quick you know like today things move really quick so it's great to to you know that we've we've sort of put it out there and it's fallen into the zeitgeist and people are wanting to stay current with it you know like we had a packed panel you know which is just a lot of love so i'm appreciative i'm humbled by it huge shout out to uh to tori kittles i really enjoyed our our chat josh enjoyed our chat with josh and sarah as well too make sure you check out colony miss any of the seasons and if you haven't even watched the show you can catch up on demand if that's what you want to do again we're able to do that because of technology. So entertainment and technology goes hand in hand. There's an intersection of technology and entertainment. I did a panel about Black Enterprise last year in Silicon Valley. So it exists. But thank you guys so much. On next week's show, we're going to continue more of our coverage from Comic-Con 2017. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Tech Zone. Until next time, I'll talk to you later.